today you'll hear a special poem I created just for Picnic at the Opera. These are flash poems. They're part of a collection based on a theme of food and meals that changed my life. And I invite you to participate by thinking about food and meals that have changed your life. Today we also have an amazing guest joining us nationally recognized poet, six-time author and professor emeritus at the University of Delaware. Fleeta Brown will be with us and I'm so honored that she could be here. And now for the piece I drafted for you. It's called Green Beans and it's dedicated to my mom. That crunch, that snap, that string, that munch, munch, munch of eating raw beans in the blistering sun. I was the worm, I was the shudder that ran through my mother. The sound for her was not delish, but crude and rude. Still, I yanked those crisp wands from the vines, those tiny scepters for dolls, those first green pens with which I wrote in the dry soil between the rows my own name, then ate the pen laden with dust right in front of my mother, knowing the squirm of her shoulders, the wrinkles that rose beside each of her nose. I laughed until I peed to have such hold just for a moment to appall her so. That was decades ago. And now the beans have dried to pods and the sound of breaking open their fragile shells percusses like a clock. The tiny elongated seeds inside, small wrinkled moons spill into my hand, not unlike the pills which I hand to her and she accepts and swallows with warm water and shudders a little at the bitter powder of time, at the worm munching the green still. But sometimes, when she is feeling well, I bring to her a handful of green beans, and I eat one raw, and she shakes her head and scolds again, and we laugh, and she eats them with me raw and crunchy. After all this, breaking the string together, that jolly green giant time, having lost its power to appall her. My name is Felita Brown. Um, this is a picnic Amory read about um, green beans. And I have a poem here uh, about a puffball. You know you can eat puffballs, don't you? Well, this, this poem um, is also about a heart attack, which doesn't sound very picnic-y, but I just want to let you know before I, fin before I read it that it turns out OK. <laughs> the puffball was beauteously, bulbously huge redundant as a luminous mood, puffed and bald, seized by Uncle Richmond from the deep woods, plucked with both hands and brought to the doorstep for our amazement and accolades, and to be sliced and fried, tasting like nothing but slightly singed butter, which we happily shared back then, several years before he collapsed on the porch at 85 with a heart attack, having driven 40 miles from Petoskey home, clutching his chest, sweat streaming after the meeting where the argument was made to inject toxic wastes under the perfectly safe shelf of rock to mingle in the underground seas and sift slowly out to the Great Lakes, as has happened before. He stood and said so, hands shaking more than usual, so that on the dark road home, he had to stop for a minute near King's Orchard, then drive on, legs finally giving way on his own front porch, Lee luckily hearing something like a branch falling. So he survived, lean and leaving to range through the forests after the fantastical and favor us with the tale of it again, or occasionally so with the whole thing harbored and carried to into our presence, a careful joy, mysteriously magnified, come upon as if the earth had started suddenly over. Oh no, she's 